Ladies and gentlemen, I'm NoGuy21. Welcome back to Let's Play Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker. In the last episode, we fought against Arcturus with some mixed results. Well, we were able to withstand the fire, but Yamato was barely able to do any damage, which resulted in Miyako having to show up and save our asses. Hooray. But at the end of the day, Arcturus is defeated, Miyako has captured Arcturus, and we're not fading into the abyss for now. I'm not so sure if that'll actually become a problem later, because instead of killing the Sipted Tyrons, they're under lock and key. Now, unfortunately, Miyako does not want to give us any fucking information, which is annoying, to say the least. But hopefully we'll get some answers to in uh, today's episode, but probably not. First things first, though, we need to have some conversations here. Well, let's talk to Yamato. Now that he's back. Ah, it's you. What are you doing? How are you feeling? Surgery for Takoyaki. <laughs> Takoyaki, huh? I haven't had that in a long time. No, it is regrettable, but with the world in this state, there is no time for treats. By the way, what do you think of this world? Uh, besides it being a shithole? Or are you being actually serious about the shithole? Hmm, I'm sure it seems that way to you. The world has succumbed to the void yet again, and we are still unable to free ourselves from the administrator's control. Even so, this world is still much better than the second one. However, if it wasn't like this, it would mean my time in the Akasha Stratum was for naught. Uh, thanks, or sorry. Uh, thank you for the work. No need. You ought to thank Alcor instead. Without him, you would never have been able to regress past that world. It was a terrible place. Nothing but death and despair. But, what is he doing? It isn't like Alcor to get himself captured. Aw, uh, what's this, Yamato? You worried about him? Why? Should I be? The simple fact is, we have need of his powers. It would cause trouble if he were to keep sleeping. That's all there is to it. And of course he's right. Let's hurry up and rescue him then. Sounds like a plan. One question, where is he? You're right. We'll rescue Alcor as soon as matters are settled. <laughs> you and I together. We won't lose this time. Well, at least Yamato's confident, which is a good sign. Yay! Unyielding void. There is a problem. A problem? What problem? Did something happen? Let me guess, the void is going faster. With our tourists out of commission, the void should have ceased its spread. It has not. What? Are you serious? I'm afraid so. I've compared reports from multiple areas. The void is still closing in around us. Oh man, oh no. The spread hasn't stopped near Osaka or Nagoya either. It has slowed down since we defeated Arcturus, but at best it only gives us a little more time. But why? If the void isn't stopping, how much longer do we have? It's difficult to get an exact number, but I'd say a day, maybe two. Or less, because that's how this usually goes. One day? Why? We defeated the Triangulum, we, we did everything we could! They're still alive, that's probably why. Of course we did. We fought Tenebola, Spica, Arcturus, that's all of them. No, no, hold on, we haven't. We technically haven't defeated them. Huh? They're not destroyed. They're in Miyako's custody. Maybe that's why the Void hasn't stopped. That is a possibility. But, we can verify that the attack against this data in the Akashic Record has ended. If their assault had not subsided, it would be gone by now. 
So, where does that leave us? Up shit creek without a paddle? It leaves us in a world that will soon be consumed by the void. That Miyako woman claimed the astrolabe was shut off. How does she know about its existence? Maybe Psyduke told her. That might explain why she knows about it. But that doesn't explain how she knows it will remain shut off after Arcturus' defeat. Most importantly, has the astrolabe actually ceased to function? Can we really trust her words? She seemed very sure when she said it. Chief Miyako does not make claims like that lightly. If her claims are true, then our situation is even more dire. Fantastic! Yeah, this world has already been heavily damaged by the Void. If we use the Astrolabe to regress the world, we'd be able to invert that damage. But there's no chance of doing that if the Astrolabe really is non-functional. That was our plan. Defeat Arcturus and return to the Akasha Stratum with Alcor to regress the world again. It would seem that now we need to reactivate the Astrolabe somehow. Reactivate it, huh? If we asked Psyduke, he might know something that could help. Unfortunately, Miyako still hasn't kept it. <laughs> oh, damn it, I was trying so hard not to sneeze. Oh, damn it, really interrupted the cutscene with that. And the Triangulum, too. It seems that girl is holding all the cards within her grasp. And it's annoying. We know that she has a plan, and that it involves sacrificing the 13 of us. What do you think Chief Miyako's plotting? Uh, to save the world? Chief Miyako does seem to know more than we do about the Astrolabe and the Triangulum. You think that perhaps she's using this knowledge to try and save the world? I... I don't think she's a bad person either. She's been trying since the beginning to protect humanity from the Triangulum. And she did come to save us. <sighs> You're such a sucker. She's probably only been helping us because she needs us for her master plan. There is too much we do not know at this time. Perhaps we should wait for her to contact us. I have other business to attend to anyhow. Like what, having fun? <sighs> I'm afraid there's no time for that sort of thing. I had planned on investigating how this world's chips can control the Dragon Stream. It became quite apparent in the battle against Arcturus. My control over the Dragon Stream is much weaker in this world. As it stands, I am no match for Miyako Hotsui. Odds are, we will need to face her one day, and I need to be prepared for it. For now, stay sharp and keep your eyes on Miyako Hotsui. Dismissed. Fantastic! What the future holds? Hey, we're getting the transmission from Chief Miyako. Everyone's at the command center already, so you better hurry. Oh, thanks for the message, Fumi. Thanks. Oh, there he is. Now that all of you are here, let's begin. Okay, I'll patch her through. Good evening to all of you in the Nagoya branch. Do not bother with formalities. We have questions, and we want them answered. Tell me what you know about the Astrolabe, and about Alcor. Where are you keeping him? I have no obligation to answer that question. I will only say that he is safe for the time being. Alright, that's good to hear. Any chance you'll just give him back? Probably not. No. That is something I simply cannot do. Okay. Back to the Astrolabe, then. You said its functions will remain shut down even after Arcturus' defeat. What did you mean? I meant exactly what I said. Even should you slay Arcturus, the Astrolabe would not reactivate. This is because there is no rightful administrator. Oh, wonderful. Uh, shouldn't Psyduke be the rightful administrator? No. Elcor is not an administrator. Why the heck not? He took his place on the Heavenly Throne. Besides, he already managed to work the Akashic Record so that we could regress the world. Twice! He is insufficient to become an administrator. Therefore, he would not be capable of reactivating the Astrolabe. Then, how do we reactivate it? If Arcturus had succeeded in taking the Heavenly Throne, that would have reactivated the Astrolabe. 
but Arcturus was trying to destroy mankind. We can't allow something like that to become administrator. Yes, I agree. Allowing Arcturus control of the astrolabe would have been unthinkable. However, if we wish to restore the parts of this world that have been devoured by the Void, we require the astrolabe. Chief Miyako, you speak as if you have such means. Do you have another way to reactivate the astrolabe? We need to create a true administrator, preferably one that won't attack mankind. Create an administrator? Is that even possible? It certainly is. How? Let me guess, sacrifice. My plan at its fruition will make Alcor into an administrator, with the right to sit upon the heavenly throne. To achieve that, I will require the cooperation of all 13 of you. Did you lock up the Triangulum for the same reason? That's why the Void's still spreading. Because you won't just destroy them! I can see how you would come to that conclusion, but your speculation is just that. The Void has not stopped because there is no Administrator upon the Heavenly Throne. Its current spread is unrelated to the Triangulum, now that their functions have ceased. Oh, wonderful. I have been keeping the Triangulum in a near-sleep state because I intend to make them swords. Swords? Are you going to fight someone? The swords are the servants of the Administrator. They carry out its will. Polaris had the Septentrions, and Arcturus had Denebola and Spica. Alcor was not recognized as a legitimate administrator. He had no swords to command. If we repurpose the Triangulum to become his swords, he will truly be able to claim the title of administrator. You... you can do that? Only if the 13 of you cooperate. Now, when you keep saying cooperate, what does that entail exactly? I should probably tell you that I may have to sit out any strenuous activity this could involve. Well, let's see. What's the cooperation tax? I need all of you to become part of a device that will turn Elcor into the administrator. B part of a device? What does that even mean? Once you become one with the device, your consciousness will cease to be. All sensation, thought, and physical activity will be halted, and you will remain suspended in a state very close to death. What? That's... Oh, man. Yeah, that's not happening. No way! How long would we have to stay a part of this device? If you truly wish for peace, for all eternity. <laughs> right. You're taking this joke way too far, Miyako-chan. I am sorry to say this is no jest. There is no other way to save this world. Once you enter the device and Alcor becomes the rightful administrator, the Astrolabe will reactivate. At that point, he will use the Astrolabe to regress the world once more, returning it to a state before this destruction began. As long as Alcor remains administrator, there would be no threat from others, such as Polaris or Arcturus. There'll be peace once and for all. And the only ones capable of fulfilling that role, becoming one with the device, are the 13 of you. We're the only ones? Why? Because we're special. It is the mandate of Providence. I am unsure how much you are aware of regarding the Administrator and the Astrolabe. But as the ones who defeated Polaris, only you have the right to activate it. Because we have administrative authority. Administrative authority? What's that? I'll explain later. All you need to know for now is that the 13 of us are necessary to use the Astrolabe again. Yes. All 13 of your lives must be sacrificed for the reactivation of the Astrolabe. And I too shall sacrifice myself to see this plan fulfilled. You too? And why is that? Because my existence in this world is unnatural. What do you mean? Hey, she actually knows. Go figure. <clears throat> now that my brother has returned to this world, I should not be. I am an anomalous existence. If I remain, there is a chance the Astrolabe will not reactivate. In order to safeguard mankind, I must be sacrificed as well. Miss Miyako, 
You're okay with that? How can you speak of sacrificing yourself without hesitation, without fear? Real easily, apparently. It's real easy to do so when you actually believe in your convictions. Doing so also tends to make you, um... Extreme and rather losing some human characteristics. It is because I am Miyako Hotsui. I am humanity's guardian and shield, the head of the Hotsuin family. It is not only for the sake of my duty. I wish to protect humanity. I wish to see them live in peace and prosper. And this is why your plan is fucking stupid. We all know someone whom we wish to protect. Friends. Family. Please, you must understand. But, but, even if it is to save humanity, it shouldn't require a sacrifice. It shouldn't come at such a cost. Miss Miyako, just as you hold humanity dear to your heart, there are many who hold you dear the same way. <sighs> You're so strange. Most people would be angry or in denial with all this talk. Yet... It seems as though you are more concerned for my well-being than your own. That's because Eo is a sweet little snowflake and should be protected at all costs because if we don't, she dies! Of course we don't want to die, but we don't want anyone else to have to die either. Which is why... why we don't want you to sacrifice yourself. We will do everything we can to stop it! I like how Eo is speaking for everybody here, but no one has said anything... Let me try that again. I like how Eo is speaking for everyone when everyone else should be speaking something right now. <sighs> Alas, there is no other way to save this world. My plan will ensure the most lives saved for a small sacrifice. I wish to protect the people of this world, and I believe in you. I know that you will come to understand me and agree. Bitch, you don't know me at all. We haven't spoke to each other one-on-one -on -one <laughs> enough for you to get a single rank, so fuck off. I will contact you tomorrow morning to hear your answer. Farewell. Hold on. How do we know you're telling the truth about any of this? We... We want to talk to Saiduk. You will just have to trust in me. It is all I can ask of you. So, to save the world, we have to die. <sighs> <laughs> this is way too big of a decision to make right now. And besides, we don't know if we trust what Miyako-chan has to say on the subject, yeah? At least her explanation of the Triangulum makes sense. If Falcor were not a rightful administrator, it does stand to reason that Arcturus would appear to replace him. I feel there is a great deal of truth in what she told us just now. Then, if we don't do what Miyako-chan says, we won't be able to use the Astrolabe. Ever. The world will just end up swallowed by the Void, and we're finished. I suppose we should agree on our answer by tomorrow morning, then. You are all dismissed. Try to get some sleep. Keyword try. Oh, hey, we reached stage one. <laughs> Hooray. Time for bed. Time for bed and another recap. Well, hey there! Looks like you had yourselves another busy day. I made a little summary about all the cool stuff you got up to today. Well, wanna hear it? Yeah, sure, why not? I think you've become less hyper as, a, as the days go by. Alrighty, let's give this a go. First off, you got a checkup from Otome last night, so you woke up in the infirmary. After you had a stretch and brushed your teeth, you discovered that Mako Mako escaped from Jips. It turns out she didn't discover anything about what Miyako Hotsuin was plotting, but at least she got out safe. Phew. Then you guys went to the Sky Tower to save His Excellency. Along the way, you beat the snot out of some pesky gyps agents guarding the terminal. You snuck into the underground facility all stealth-like and talked with His Excellency. Keyword, stealth-like. There's only so much a person in a cardboard box can do when they're not in Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> the best EO can do is just uh, charge <laughs> and hit him in the head. Oh, Best scene in the game. Best scene. 
That's when, spoiler, you found out that Yami has been in the Akasha Stratum this whole time. I didn't see that twist coming. Now, to make this all sorts of complicated, His Excellency was being held captive by the Dragon Stream, so you'd need Yami to break him out. Except there was no way to get to the Akasha Stratum, so, like, there was no way to get Yami. We were all trying to figure out how to get up to that giant space library, when out of nowhere, BAM! Arcturus O'Clock! You put up a good fight against Arcturus, full points for trying, but in the end, there was no way you could topple it. Yeah, because the storyline dictated that we couldn't. I mean, what's with that cheap ability? It's cheating, I say. 100% not fair. So don't get down, sweetie. It's not your fault. Yeah, especially when I found out that Pierce doesn't work. That was a fun time. So you guys were gonna run. And at that very moment, Miyako Hotsuin showed up to lend a hand. Finally! But, then again, it was probably only because she needed you guys alive for her vague, mysterious plan to work, right? Oh, when you guys were holding the line against Arcturus, your friends got more of their memories back. That's when you realized that this was actually the third world. There was a whole second world before this. It turns out you guys, well, most of you, already fought the Triangulum in the second world. Uh, that's really sad, though. It would have been nice for you guys to have had a little peace and not remembered all that bad stuff. It's not right. And it's not fair that things had to happen like this. Tico Tico is near tears over here. You don't sound like it, Tico. On top of that, your friends figured out why you're the only one who didn't have that dream. It's because, well, you didn't exist in that world. And that's some existential crisis t thinking right there. It makes so much sense now, right? Right? Right! After that whole big fight, the void started spreading really, really fast because of Arcturus. It was all, like, super not cool. So you guys were all like, sigh, fine, I guess we need Yami's help to beat Arcturus. Because it turned out, in the second world, it was Yami and His Excellency who took Arcturus down for the count. So, Fumi Fumi happened to stumble on a terminal that Gyps was trying to keep hush-hush this whole time. And behold, it was a terminal that could send you flying all the way through space to the Akasha Stratum. As soon as you got that news, dun-dun-da, disaster struck and you got a death video of Yami. So, you guys were all like, no, Yami, we have to save him. So, then you went to the Akasha Stratum. Which is where you learned why Yami was up there the whole time instead of down here, helping. I guess the Triangulum were trying to destroy your data in the Akashic Record. Which is never a good thing. And Yami stayed behind to salvage and restore your data. See, it's all confusing because remember how you totally didn't exist in that super bleak second world? It's thanks to Yami fixing up your data that you were resurrected in this one. Of course, it wasn't all hugs and high fives. You found out that if Yami stopped restoring your data, you might kind of maybe disappear. Which is why he was all like, I have no intention of returning to the material plane. But then you were all like, please. And he was like, sigh, I suppose I consent. <laughs> you promised him that you totally demolish Arcturus before you disappeared. Gotta love Tico's summaries. Yami was all swooned by your charm and your suaveness and your cuteness, and he decided to come back with you. Are you... A... Hmm, I better not finish that line of thought. So you and Yami formed the super epic team of Arcturus smashing, and you guys smashed Arcturus. Especially when, she, when the follow-up line from that line of thinking is that. Yeah, I better stop while I'm ahead. And that slowed the spread of the void, which is awesome. But it didn't stop it, which is less awesome. And, and Miyako Hotsuin said it was because the astrolabe was shut off. Then, at night, Miyako Hotsuin called and she finally told you about her big plan for totally saving the world and stuff. Uh, big plan, B, P, T, S, W, S. Yeah, I don't have a clever acronym for that. 
It kind of sort of involves sacrificing the Triangulum, herself, and all 13 of you, so... Yeah. But doing all that would totally make His Excellency the rightful administrator. According to Miyako Hotsuin, her big plan for totally saving the world and stuff is the only plan for totally saving the world and stuff. But to make that work, she wants you all to sacrifice yourselves. Which is not happening. She ended the transmission after saying she'd give you until tomorrow to make a decision. But, you know, when you think about it, can we really trust what that woman says? Is Miyoko Hotsuin's plan really the only way to fix the world? It's not. Oh well, I got no clue. Well, that about wraps up today's big events. Okay, have a nice way! Yeah, she is definitely not as hyper as she usually is. Save. Friday. The day of wrath dawns. Now do the children of men tremble. <laughs> Are you awake? I'm up. Come in, Mako, pervert. Here we go. Oh, this is familiar. <laughs> I'd rather not. It would be rude of me. Come to the command room once you're dressed. Chief Yamato called a meeting. That's all. Makoto's managed to elude you. Follow her or head to the command center? Follow. Did you sleep all right? Like a brick. R really dude? Damn, you've got nerves like steel. Well, that's because I know you're gonna listen to me no matter what we- what decision I make. I couldn't stop thinking about what Miyako-chan said yesterday. I didn't get a wink of sleep. We're all here. Now that you've all had a chance to sleep on it, have we made up our mind? Oh boy, here we go! Yes, it is time to decide our course of action. Hmm. Well, I've been giving it a lot of thought, and... Even if it will save the world, I just don't know about giving up our lives, you know? Then, should we refuse? We have no guarantees that Miyako Hotsuin is telling us the truth. And besides, we can't be sure that her plan is really the only way to save the world. You're right. But do we have another plan? W wait we shouldn't do as Miss Miyako asks just because we don't have another option prepared. There has to be a better way. Huh. Looks like we're getting a call from Chief Miyako. Good morning. I have given you a night to consider my proposal. Have you come to a decision? Yeah, fuck off. What are we gonna do? You're not gonna tell her we'll sacrifice ourselves, are you? We fought the administrators and gone through so much. We can't just give up now. I think we should consider how much we truly trust this woman. We've overcome very difficult odds up to this point. Are we sure we won't be able to overcome the scenario she's trying to convince us of? The answer should be clear to us all. Now, tell me your answer. Yeah, fuck off. So that is your answer. Yeah! We... We can find a way where no one has to die. Where no one has to die. If only there truly was such a path. We will find a way, no matter what. And that includes you too, Miss Miyako. We'll find a solution where no one has to be sacrificed. <laughs> You're all so strange. After all I've done, you're still worried about my well-being. Yet I must say this. There is no solution. The world cannot be saved without sacrifice. You give in way too easily. There's always another answer. If so, then what other way is there? Well, that's easy. We'll, re re we'll activate the astrolabe ourselves. Of course. And my plan is the only way we can accomplish that. That's not true. We'll find another way to activate it. No one has to die. Mm -hmm. If we can make it work, we can stop the void and the damaged world will be healed. We did the same thing when we fought Polaris. 
That may be true, but what means do you have of activating the astrolabe? It's completely shut down. All functions are inaccessible. It will only reactivate when a true administrator sits upon the heavenly throne. Which is why there is no other option. Only my plan will work. Even if you were to somehow reactivate the astrolabe, another problem yet remains. And what's that? And what's that? The administrators. Arcturus and Polaris aren't the only ones in existence. Urai, Alferk, Alderaman. There are a multitude of stars with the potential to become an administrator. Oh, wonderful! The Outer Gods are a thing! Well, I always knew they were a thing because, uh, Nyarlathotep exists as a demon that you could summon in the earlier games and is a main force in Persona. Well, the earlier ones at the very least. Unless a true administrator is created, the others will continue to lay siege to mankind. <laughs> I say let them come. Who cares how many show up? We'll bash in their creepy faces every time. That would be an eternal struggle. Moreover, do you expect you would be victorious every time? You wouldn't be the only ones to suffer. Civilians too would be caught in harm's way. Do you wish for all humanity to be caught up in this conflict? This never-ending battle? That's... <sighs> I will ask once more. Please, cooperate with me. Concede to my plan. How about... No, fuck off. So that is your answer. He's right. We will find a way where everybody can live. Yeah. Miyako, you may have already given up. But I promise we will find a better way. We just have to keep thinking. Keep searching. I see. Negotiations have broken down. I suppose I have no choice but to force you to comply with my plan. What? Damn. I guess we really are Miyako-chan's enemies now. Eh, we can't lose. And we won't. But Miyako-chan still controls the Dragon Stream. That's her real power. Last time, she managed to trap us with that power, and we couldn't do a thing about it. Then we need to find a way of countering her use of the Dragon Stream. My power with it is weaker than before, but with the right ritual, I should become a match for her. A ritual? What do you mean? Let me guess, unsealing the Dragon Stream and taking it for yourself. We need to go to Mount Fuji. I've been looking into it, and the facility which controls the Dragon Stream is in the mouth of the mountain in this world as well. If I perform the ritual there, I'll fully regain my power over the Dragon Stream. Roger that. I'll start hacking the JIT's database and see if I can find the terminal code for Mount Fuji. I'm counting on you, Kano. How long will it take? Hmm. They've likely increased their security over there. It may take a while. In that case, get to work. We'll depart from Mount Fuji as soon as you have obtained the code. Everyone else, make the necessary preparations for the coming battle. And let's continue searching for a way to save the world. Dismissed. Fantastic. Righteous Heart. A dancer's distress, strength of will, musical gift, astrolabe, the answer, escape of truth, thinking, thanking. Sorry, Yamato. Chalma Mushi Joy, a home for us. Okay, so I can't talk to Ronaldo. So, let's see, until we get the, uh, the, uh, code, the best thing for us to do is basically talk to people. Fantastic. I guess we start from the bottom up this time. Hey, it's you. Just hold on a moment. I'm taking these medical supplies too. <laughs> uh, grab her arm, catch her in your arms, dodge her. Catch her, obviously. Oh. Sorry, I must have lost my footing. Is it anemia again? I think so. Maybe I've been pushing myself a little too hard lately. I could usually carry stuff like this, no problem, but... Doctors neglect their own health. I'm sorry. It's probably true. I guess being a doctor and a demon tamer is taking quite a toll on me. I know a doctor's health is top priority, but... 
Why have I been pushing myself so hard? Because Koharu isn't with you? Oh, that, that might be it. When Koharu was my daughter, I could draw the line because I didn't want to leave her alone. Now that I don't have that, I feel I shouldn't stop working. Ever. To me, she was home. But now... What's wrong, you two? Oh, Mako. Hotome, are you alright? You look awfully pale. Uh, Otome fainted. What? I think I just pushed myself a little too hard. Sorry to trouble you. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Otome. Lift your head, Mako. There's nothing to be sorry about. No, it's my fault for not realizing there was something wrong until now. Especially since we can only keep fighting because we have your support. Mako. I want you to tell me when you're troubled or scared or worried. Don't ever hold back. I'm your comrade and your friend. Thank you, Mako. I will. I promise. Well said, Mako. I can't improve, so ditto. Huh? Fumi? I'll help you carry things. All sorts of things. I'll start by taking this one. You can grab that heavy-looking one, Mako. You're helping? Are you feeling all right, Fumi? <laughs> you're the one that's not feeling well. I'm not so heartless that I'd make you carry things while you're sick, Otome. I know. Drink some of this and get your energy up. It's theoretically the best. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, Mako. Chop, chop. Otome, you stay here and rest a bit. I find this scene hilarious, by the way. I'm coming. Bye, you two. I'll leave Otome in your hands. Um... She's technically still is. You still do have a place to come home to? Everyone's worried about you? Still feeling lonely? No, not anymore. I have the two of them always looking out for me. I have you too. Thanks. I'm okay now. I should be more careful. So I can always be there to help my incredible friends. I'm feeling a little better now. I think I'll have this Miso Vitan drink and take a break. Hooray, she's feeling better. Can't have the doctor collapse after all. Oh, she's at rank 5. Oh yeah, I forgot, most of the girls are almost at rank 5 because... Well, most of the girls. Otome, Fumi, and Mako are almost at rank 5 because I spent a lot of time talking to them while the others were away. Yay! She's back to rank 5. Jungo is surrounded by dogs and cats. <laughs> what the fuck? Look, I met my kitty again, and many new friends. Well, there are a lot I can say for that. They're all his family. I'm having them test my Chawan Mushi. Do you like this one? Mm-hmm. Okay. How about this one? No? You don't like this one? Okay. It has room for improvement. <laughs> that tickles! <laughs> you must have very tough skin, Jungo, because claw claws hurt. It took a long time, but we finally met each other again. I'm very, very, very happy. I'm glad, Jungo. That's one heck of a quiz. How'd you meet him again? I'm gonna guess Chawan Mushi. Good for you, Jungo. Me too. I still met up with all of you, even though I didn't have my memories yet. That's because our bonds are strong. They last even between worlds. That's why I was able to meet him again. We couldn't meet earlier because I was busy fighting to protect important things. So now I'll do everything I can to protect him and this small happiness. Good on you, Jungo. Good on you, buddy. The simple man deserves happiness. Yep, let's just keep going up. 
We're gonna skip Astral Light because we got a feeling this is the one we need to talk about for story progression. Hey man, how are you doing? We took down our tourists, so there's a relief. Well, but Yamato's back. I realized how dependent we were on him. How about we give him a reward? That's a good idea. We can get him a present or something. The only problem is, what do you get for the guy who has no interest at all? Speak of the devil. There's our prince arrogant. Perfect timing. I'll just go ask him right now. You wait here. Hey! Yamato! Stop yelling, Shijima. I am not deaf. Oh, <laughs> my bad. So, totally casual thing I gotta ask you. No biggie, just wondering, what kind of stuff do you like? Daichi, he's not gonna answer you. What do I like? Willpower is great. I tend to approve of strength, physical and otherwise. You know what? That, that was on me. I was totally unclear there. Let me phrase it this way. Like, is there anything you want? Capable personnel. <laughs> huh. Uh, okay. Um. Oh, hey, I know. If someone, not me, by the way, wanted to hypothetically, again, not me, get you some kind of present, what would you enjoy? I don't need your charity, Shijima. <sighs> yeah, of course you wouldn't. S sorry to bug you. Huh? Critical failure, dude. I couldn't even get a whiff of the idea of a hint. Thanks for trying, useless Shijima. Come on, man, don't go all Yamato on me. Have mercy. Don't you think I get that enough? <sighs> It'd probably be best if you asked him yourself. He likes you. I know, I know, I was the one who suggested it. But will you please ask him? I'll go see if I can scrounge up some intel from the others. Huh. What are you doing there? Uh... Hey, Yamato, you want any takoyaki? A tempting offer. I thought there was protocol to these situations where you clumsily bandy about for hints and deny accusations first. I presume this is merely a continuation of Shijima's conversation from earlier? What are you two plotting? Uh... We're grateful for all you've done for us. I was hoping to give you a gift as thanks. Hmm... I see. I suppose I can accept your offer if that's the case. However, I do not lack anything at the moment. Whenever I am in need of something, I look into the cause of the problem and solve it. That's simply how I've been living. Dude, you are so serious, you know that? Why? What do you mean to imply? Am I not always? <sighs> of course, I do understand your intentions. I will have to examine this matter again in the future. Well, Takayaki's a start. We'll eventually get him to realize that there are material goods in the world for him to enjoy. Food is just the beginning. Essence of truth. Uh, you guys okay? So, you see, he was all set to propose. Oh no, don't tell me. He failed? Invite me to the wedding. He lost the ring. Oh, for fuck's sakes, man. So he couldn't go through with it. There was a hole in my jacket. I guess no matter what state the world's in, this thing's doomed to have a hole in it. I guess that's what I get for buying a cheap knockoff. But at least she sewed a patch on for you. Now, I think she did a good job. It may be a knockoff, but it's got more warmth and care in it than a real one could ever have. You can't question the love in that mending. That ring was expensive. Go buy another? <laughs> That's a callous answer. That means you got another reason to live. On the bright side, maybe I'll channel this frustration next time we're in battle. But come on, I was so close. And now back to square one. I don't know much about brands, but that ring was from Shiffany. Huh? You haven't heard of Shiffany? Well, what do you know? You're in high school. Wait, 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 Joe. Tell me the name of that brand again. 
I don't know when you became a fashionista, Ronomatopoeia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's random. <laughs> I stared at it for hours, so I know. C H I F F N E. Shiffany. Joe, a ring's a ring. <laughs> Just get her some other one. Tell you what, if you want, I'll go pick one out with you next time. In fact, Yes, that would probably be best. We'll do just that. Uh, I'll come too because I think Joe needs more supervision. You'll come along? Excellent. I'm sure the three of us can find something even better than the old one. I promise, Joe. Okay, this is getting kind of weird. I'm perfectly capable of handling this myself. Although, you guys did cheer me up. Thanks. And with that, I take my leave. So, uh, wanna hear a secret? Sure. I felt so bad after the failed proposal attempt that I... I told Joe's girlfriend the whole story. She knows him so well, she could tell something was up the moment he walked in the room. And do you know what she told me? She said she'd wait for him as long as it takes, even if that means forever. She's a keeper. <laughs> that Joe's a lucky guy. I hope he knows it. Yeah, we're actually gonna get him a real ring this time. <laughs> Rather than some fake knockoff. Alright, EO, you're next. Is fighting Miyako really the only way? Are you still on about that, Hina? It's decided already! We have to stop her! Jeez, I don't want you covering my back if you're gonna act like this. Too far, I. I just think there's gotta be a way to solve this without a battle. Oh, why are you so stubborn, stupid Hina? What'd you call me? I don't have time to deal with children like you. S stop this! Both of you! Everybody just calm down! Being mean isn't gonna solve anything. So we're going to calm down and think this through carefully. I am calm! Fine, Eo. What do you think about Miyako? You have to have an opinion this time. I think that... I want us to understand each other. We don't need to fight. Oh, Eo. You do not belong in this universe. <laughs> you are too nice for it. Now, I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna happen. But I know I'll come up with a way for sure. So you want to do nothing? Again? I, you got it wrong. Eo isn't running from this. She's thinking it through. You're right, Eo. We need to calm down and think. We weren't getting anywhere. We were just bickering like children. I'm sorry, Irie. Oh, um, uh... We gotta have a real talk. You're right. I'm sorry, Hinako. And I'm sorry, Eo. Hey, Hina. Want to find somewhere we can sit? Yeah, I think a change of scenery would do us some good. Later, Eo. Oh, well, you be damned. They didn't notice me at all yet. Ah, oh, well done, Eo. Oh, we're gonna have to battle Miss Miyako soon, aren't we? I guess there's no time to worry. I. Thinking she's getting used to me jumping out of nowhere to s talk to her because she didn't sh cry out in surprise. I have to find a way for us all to understand one another. You know, Hinako and I fight all the time, but they always make up. I really want to make up with Miss Miyako. Hinako and I are really something else, huh? <sighs> They trust each other, they're honest with each other, they're good at fighting with each other. All three are true. Mm-hmm. That's why they can make up so fast. They trust one another. Because they're honest, they can argue and bicker, but still be best friends, no matter what. For them, fighting is a way of getting closer. As long as they're sincere, they'll always be friends. Ugh, my eyes. Oh god, I need to go wash out my eyes after this. Hey, that's the key, you've done it before. You're right. 
It's like what happened with that lady in Shinjuku. I was honest with her, so she opened up to me. Maybe I should do the same with Miss Miyako. I... I've always thought that it's important for people to try and reach an understanding. To talk things over without fighting. And it's true, but also wrong. If I want people to really open up, to really try to connect and empathize, we can't be afraid to argue, to differ, even to fight. Wow, what's this? A pacifist that actually knows what it truly means to be a pacifist? I'll be damned. <laughs> I want to be Miss Miyako's friend. If I have to fight her to be her friend, then so be it. I'll fight as hard as I can. Thank you. Because of you, I finally found the answer. Hey, you figured it out for yourself. Oh no, that's not true. I think. Though I'd be really happy if that's how you felt. Let's do our best. We have to make this the last fight. Hooray! Oh, only uh, one, two, three, four people left to talk to, and oh god, I. Okay, I'll be right back. This is really bugging my eyeballs. God, that feels much better. Much better. Fucking dandruff. It was bad because I didn't want to get out of my eyeballs. Okay. Back to events. I just told you how it goes. La 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 la. And I just told you it's a bit off, moron. It's supposed to go la, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, la, la. Now you got me all confused, stupid Hina. Oh, I see you're getting along just fine, guys. Well, we are an ideal idol duo, right, I? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we get a little too passionate, though, and end up in screaming matches like this. <laughs> At least we figured out how to argue properly not too long ago. It was pretty bad for a while. I would be falling and she'd start biting me. <laughs> it was not a pretty picture. Oh, I barely broke the skin. Let it go. Besides, you weren't any better. The way you acted the first time we met was so awkward. Listen to this, right? So, there I was, playing my keyboard out on the street, just improvising. Then, this crazy girl in the crowd starts spinning and dancing. And of course, it was stupid Hina. She was in the groove, right? So, I finish, 
and she just runs up to me and shouts, let's form a duo! Talk about coming on too strong. Plus, duo? It's not like we're a comedy act or something. You're lucky it was me you came to, not some other random street pianist. They'd be totally freaked out by that, right? Uh, yeah, totally freaked out. Nuh-uh, that's so not true. Listen here, it just means that I's stupid music is that amazing. When I first heard Irie's music, I was stuck trying to decide between doing what my family wanted or what I wanted. The moment I heard those keys, I knew what I had to do. Eyes music saved me. Hina was in Nagoya for a traditional Japanese dance recital, but she totally ditched it to dance with me. Eyes music has the power to sway hearts. I'll give her that. Uh, what do you mean, give her that? I've got tons of other good points. Like how I'm overflowing with youth. Something you seem to be lacking. Toss her an insult and she flings it right back. I'd never expect anything less from my eye. Oh, speaking of which, we should get back to that melody. Hey, let's ask him what he thinks. We seem to have hit a wall. Good call. We're writing a new song. Oh, this ought to be good. It's supposed to help people have hope for the future. Except we're stuck on the chorus. What kind of melody do you think would work? Why not just combine both of yours? The ones we were arguing about before? If things were that simple, we'd be done by... Wait, that just might work. This might make the dance a lot more complex, Hina. Are you okay with that tune? Have some faith in your partner, I. You're always reading too much into stuff. It keeps you from going all out. Don't worry, I'll follow along no matter what you play. So you play your heart out. Oh, Hina. Okay. I won't hold back. We're going full throttle with an Irie melody I know you'll love. Thanks for your help. This is gonna be our best song yet. Come on, let's go try it out. Thanks. Nice to see that they're arguing actually has a point this time around. Astrolabe. Oh, hey, great timing. I wanted to ask Yamato more about this whole administrative authority thing that came up yesterday. Wanna tag along? Hey, good idea. You are Yamato's favorite after all. I'm sure if you're there, he'll open up a lot more. Yeah, okay, I'll go with you. You can't talk to Yamato otherwise. All right, well, let's get a move on. Yes, what is it? Miyako mentioned it too, but we don't really have a feasible plan to save the world right now. The only way we can stop the void and heal the damage done to the world is by regressing it. Of course, even if we do that, another administrator will just show up and try to destroy humanity again. But we're not going to get anywhere at all unless we regress the world. And the only way to do that, it seems, is by using the astrolabe. Yeah. And me and Hina were thinking, Using that thing has something to do with that administrative authority, right? It came up when you were talking to Miko. That's right. The point is, we're not really too clear on what it is. It's because we possess this authority thing. That's why Miko wants us to sacrifice ourselves to reactivate the astrolabe, right? Correct. Administrative authority is required to use the astrolabe. It is something held by all rightful administrators. We hold the authority within us all. Which is why Miyako's plan requires all 13 of us. Then, here's a question. Why can't we just be the administrator? Combined, we could pass that along to Alcor, so he could reactivate the astrolabe. A true administrator requires not just the swords, but the authority as well. Anything else? So why do we have the authority? Alcor divided up Polaris's authority and stored it within us. Therefore, Alcor does not hold administrative authority. It is divided among the 13 of us. So why? It would be complicated if he held onto the authority himself. Since he is a sword, he is bound by the laws of the administrators. Laws of the administrators? He would have to transfer his authority if another administrator appeared. The moment Arcturus arrived, Alcor would have had to surrender his authority. 
That would have left our tourists free to use the astrolabe. Humanity would have been erased easily. But our tourists didn't possess administrative authority, so we couldn't use it. Unlike administrators and swords, we humans are not part of the control system of the Akashic Record. That is why our tourists did not automatically obtain administrative authority. Alcor did this as a safeguard against Urai, who was supposed to be the next administrator. We would be in a much more dire situation if it weren't for Alcor's foresight. Yeah, I imagine so. Because Arcturus decided to uh, buck the trend, as it were. So that's what happened. But if Psyduke is the one who gave us his authority, why can't we just give it back to him instead of having to sacrifice ourselves? In order to return the administrative authority, we require the use of the Astrolabe. In fact, Alcor used the Astrolabe to grant it to us the first time. Oh, I see. Since we can't use the Astrolabe right now, we can't return the authority to Alcor in a normal way, which is why we'd have to sacrifice ourselves for Miyako's plan. Correct. That must be why she was so willing to offer her help in bringing all of us together again. Judging from what you've told me of her, that was most likely her purpose. She may have been spreading Nicaea to increase the odds of you regaining your memories, thus making it easier to discover us. So that's what happened. We have the administrative authority now. Does that mean if the Astrolabe were still operational, we could have done almost anything? Um... That seems to be too easy, I don't think so. Correct. Even I was only able to use it to restore data. So, how do we make full use of the Astrolabe? I mean, we gotta use it at some point to fix the world, right? There are three requirements. First, we require the administrative authority in full, which means all 13 of us must be together. Okay, that's simple enough. Just make sure no one dies. Got it. Second, we need a non-human to control the astrolabe, such as Alcor. Okay, that's step two. Finally, we need to reactivate it. Well, that doesn't seem so hard. Once we've done all these things, we can make full use of the astrolabe. So we need to find solutions for two and three, huh? Psyduke's been captured by Miyako, and we don't know how to reactivate the Astrolabe. That is correct. And, in order to take back Alcor, we have no choice but to fight Miyako Hotsui. She may also know more about why the Astrolabe has shut down. Basically, to get Psyduke back, we have no choice but to challenge Miyako. Then we'll need to find out what else she knows about the Astrolabe. That's all, right? Precisely. But I need to recover my command over the Dragon Stream to stand a chance against her. Once Kano finds the code, we'll head to Mount Fuji. Begin making your preparations. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we'll go tell everyone else about the Administrative Authority, just so they're aware too. It may help us come up with a way to save the world. Guess we'll head back then. Hold. I must speak with you about the Astrolabe. It's in our best interest if you know what functions it is capable of. It may grant us more options in the future. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> I understand. It's a lot to take in at once, and you need time to organize all your thoughts. If you are still interested in hearing what I have to say, come speak with me later on. Oh boy, well that was a dump of uh, information. Hey, it's me, Fumi. Who else would it be? I found the code to get us to Mount Fuji, so we're going to head out real soon. The chief wants us to meet up at the Public Science Museum's planetarium. Why the planetarium? Oh, well, like I told Chief Yamato, a bunch of GYPS agents just arrived here using the special train. He decided it would be safer to meet at the planetarium instead. Well, I already called everyone else, so don't be late. Why didn't we destroy the train tunnel? Jip strikes. Well, that's gonna be have to be done for next time. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been NoGa21. This has been Let's Play Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker. In next episode, we take on Jips. Free the Dragon Stream, or something like that. And face off against Miyako. But until then, thank you for watching a wonderful evening, and I'll see you all next time.